I believe, and I'm going to say it once and I'll say it again, 2024 will be the strongest year of my life. I'm going to say it again, 2024 will be the strongest year of my life. I prayed for a blessed year before. I play, prayed for a big year before. I've never necessarily prayed for a strong year. See, a strong year is not about how much I have, it's about how much I can manage. A strong year isn't about every door that opened, it's the sense to know that every open door ain't the door for me. A strong year don't mean I got 20 friends, it means I maximized the two friends I got who stayed down and loyal. You can be blessed this year, because you know what? God is God enough to bless me without me. This year is on me. I speak by faith for me, I don't know who's going to receive this, this is going to be a strong year for me. And I know it's going to be a strong year, but I've told you once and I'll say it again, you will only be as strong as your source. You will only be as strong as your source. I don't know about you, but we have an issue brewing in my house right now that has the potential of destroying my family. It is tantamount to our development. And right now, if I don't get this under control, I'm not sure I may be your pastor next week. We may have to go our separate ways because in our house right now, we are fighting over chargers. Yeah, that's real. I don't know who I'm preaching to in here. Six of y'all probably almost swung on somebody real quick. There is no worse feeling in the world than being on your phone and then it goes into safe mode. You got 10% left and you get up and walk to the last place you had your charger. And you got to reach behind the dresser, put your face on the wall, and out of nowhere you don't feel your charger. The next thing you say out your mouth is what? Who took my... Am I preaching to anybody early? Who took my charger? Well, the issues in my house have went to another level because we have chargers. If you walk in the kitchen, there are chargers on the counter. The problem is I took chargers to another level. I went and discovered there's something called a lightning charger. Now, regular chargers will charge your phone. It may just take a while. But the right sort, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's another level of chargers that if you plug into it, it will reboot you and recharge you at a quicker pace. And what I've discovered is if I don't have a long enough cord, I am at the mercy of where I plug into. If my cord ain't long enough, that means in order to use my phone, I got to literally just stand there and keep getting up and checking it back. But when I plug into my lightning charger, what should have took two hours, now only takes about 27 to 30 minutes, not because it's not as good as the other, but the charger or the source has went to another level. And I'm telling you, you got good friends you plug into when you down. It may take you a week to bounce back because the friend don't got all that you need. You can go out and get you something to eat. It ain't going to give you what you need. But there is a source that if you plug into him, He'll get your motor running quicker than anything else could. And what I'm trying to get all of us to understand is that most of us have spent our lives trying to outsource what should be an in-house resource. Okay. We've been trying to outsource what should be an in-house resource. You looking for somebody to hold you down when grandmama said, I'm leaning. Safe, Michael and secure and what I'm trying to get you to realize is if this is going to be a strong year for you you will only be as strong as your source and I came to submit and suggest to you that my source is God I'm going to say this every week every Sunday you come I'm gonna say these three things what does strong mean it means inspiration something that moves me Revelation, it helps me see me. And transformation, it helps me change me. I want you to be strong in the Lord. And in order to be strong in the Lord, you have to have strong faith. Somebody say faith. faith. All right. So if we got to have strong faith, what are the five areas that the enemy uses to attack my faith? I gave you an acronym for faith. Let's go over it real quickly. The F in faith is what? Fear. The A in faith is? 
The I in faith is immaturity. The T in faith is tiredness. Let's start today with the last one. The H in faith is hurt. The H in faith is hurt. And your trauma can be your testimony. But the problem is Satan wants you to stay wounded because he wants you to see yourself as a victim. Michael, the devil wants you to remain wounded so you can see yourself as a victim. And I submit and suggest to you that the reason the devil wants you wounded, because if you are wounded, you will remain offended. And any person who's wounded will remain offended. And if you stay offended, you will never be open. And if you don't become open, you will never testify. If you never testify, the folk around you don't ever come out. Jesus. That's why the text says we are free, Michael, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. I'm going to say this, and maybe the online church going to feel me. Y'all may not feel me in the room, but the devil is praying you don't ever get bold. The devil is praying you don't ever open your mouth. Because here's the crazy part. Your neighbor sitting next to you and they sized you up when they walked in. They sat next to you, looked at your head, looked down at your feet and said, okay, they got it all together. They don't have a clue. I don't look like. Am I preaching to anybody? What I've been through. See, it's three of y'all right now that one of your biggest irritations is that people treat you like you ain't been through nothing because you don't walk around looking like what you survived. But I came to submit and suggest this is old school church right here. Grandmama said, I am a living testimony. I should have been dead and gone, but the Lord let me live on. And the devil wants to keep you wounded. Because if he keeps you wounded, you will always play victim. But there's a shift happening in your life. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to speak to this side. For me and for you and for somebody else, there is a shift happening in your life. What is it, Pastor Mike? God is shifting some of us from their picking on me to he picked me. That's five of y'all caught that. Two of y'all over here caught it. Seven of y'all up top caught it. Five people in the comments. No, because some of y'all have spent too much of your life talking about who's picking on you. And you don't realize maybe they're picking on you because they can't stand the fact that God picked you. And six of y'all ought to get excited. Why, PMJ? Am I the only person who's ever told God, why is it always me? Why does it feel like my cousin them don't catch hell, mama them don't catch hell, friend them don't catch hell? I came to this job and I said when I got this job, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to get along with everybody. And the moment I showed up, people look at me up and down, I don't bother nobody, don't mess with nobody. Here it is. If your assignment and your anointing ain't regular, your attack won't be either. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. If your anointing ain't regular, your attack won't be regular either. If you want a regular anointing, you can go through some regular stuff. But if you know your anointing and your assignment is on another level, that means I can't run from Goliath. I got to take Goliath. I dare you to just reach over that neighbor because I think you sat next to an undercover hater and just reach a real neighbor and tell him ain't nothing regular about me. That's the wrong somebody. Just bounce back and hop off somebody and tell them ain't nothing regular about me. I have to be careful what I joke about. My anointing is so on another level. If I joke too much, God will bless me. If I, that's why if I get mad, I got to cover my mouth. Because if I mess around and say something, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm, you ought to shout, it's an extraordinary critical that's critical and I need you to catch this that for some of you he's shifting you from complaining to accepting why me why not you why me why not you that's critical why me why not you because you got to catch this and many of y'all I got to free you because you about to complain yourself out of favor y'all don't like me today do you you finna complain yourself out of favor. Here it is. I'm so tired of everybody begging me. Every time I turn around, 
Y'all asking me to do something. What you telling God is, did he make a mistake? People only beg for two reasons. Either you got it, or you look. You look like you got it. Now, I don't know who got it. God bless all seven of y'all. But for six of y'all who be walking around and your family really think you got everything that you said. I'm not faking it till I make it. I'm faking it till I... I dare seven of y'all to just bust a 360 and shout, I look like it, don't it? I look like I can help you pay your bills. I look like I can pray you out of some stuff. I look like I got it all together. But do me a favor, please be patient with me. God ain't through with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your swag just went to another level. You better shut up when people ask you stuff. Well, let me do so-and-so, 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 so-and-so. What makes you think I gotta? Shut up. Can you do so-and-so? Let me check all my accounts. You ain't got but two of them. But you better start talking like you finna be living it. Every now and then, you better wake up and say, I don't know which car I'ma take today. They don't know you talking about Uber, but forget that. God get ready to do what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Somebody shout strong. Hear me? And if this is going to be a strong year, one word that describes being strong in the Lord is faith. That's rich. Faith. So what am I trying to do, PMJ? I'm just trying to spark your faith. Inspiration, revelation, transformation. I'm trying to inspire you to go deeper in your faith. I am so ready to bring apologists. I am an apologist. I am a defender of the faith. I am a defender of the faith. That's what scholars call an apologist. I'm so ready to have nights where we do Bible studies, not me at week church. I'm ready to have nights where we sit down in obscure passages and we talk about eschatology, which is the study of the end times. If we're living in the last days, we should know what's going on, right? I'm ready to talk about pneumatology. I'm ready to talk about Christology, the study of Christ. I'm ready to talk about uh, the Pan-African slave trade, bees are bees, what took place in first century Palestine. Why is it that religion seems to slant sometimes toward the least, the lonely, the left out, and the lost? I'm ready to have those conversations. I'm ready to sit down and tell you why God is God and why Jesus is Jesus and why he's the only way. What's only one problem? How can I take you deeper when you won't come closer? And what I'm telling you is it requires faith. Somebody say faith. faith. And strong faith will birth strong families. I don't know what was on your bloodline before you, but I speak it's coming off of you because of you. I speak strong faith. I speak strong faith. My father and me are trying to break something off our bloodline. Every male in our family, for the most part, before my father, wrestled with alcoholism and were alcoholics and were drunks. So what we're doing now is we're saying we're going to be the first generation of McClure men to break that stuff. We're speaking strong family. Y'all don't hear me in here. I come against divorce on your family. I come against poverty on your family. Somebody in your family got to do it, and it might as well be you. Am I preaching to anybody in here? I dare you to just type or shout, my family will be strong. Your children going to get along. If your family blended, you're going to be blended and blessed. I know church told you you messed up because you had a child before wedlock, and now she got a child. But last time I checked, Joseph won Jesus' daddy. Therefore, Jesus grew up in a blended house. Y'all don't want to hear me. I speak strong families that we will have two parent households if we can have it. That many of you grew up with a whole lot of family trauma with parents saying stuff to you that to this day rings volumes in your ear just like your daddy. You ain't gonna be nothing. You had a mama who was broken and you didn't realize she was broken as a child. So every time she saw you, she saw the man that didn't want her. So therefore she projected that pain on you. So here it is now, you 30, still dealing with that stuff. I break that off for you today. I felt God on that. I speak strong families. I speak men will be fathers and women will be mothers and children will be submitted. I 
speak by faith that whatever the devil had on your bloodline, it stops right now. I dare you to just shout your last name right there and declare it's coming off my family. I, anybody can shout for a house and anybody can shout for a car. But when the last time you said this mess that got my cousins and my aunties not liking each other and this side fighting this side, the devil is alive, we're going to be blessed, we're going to prosper, we're going to be entrepreneurs, we're going to be united. You ought to shout strong. But it takes strong faith. It takes strong faith. I say strong friendships. Yeah. I want you to have strong friendships. You need people walking with you through life. Stop trying to make it seem like you're cool walking by yourself. That's a very lonely, dark place. Most people in this world, myself included, who have adopted this idea that I got me, are sometimes some of the most miserable people because we wrestle in our minds like why won't nobody be to me? Not what I'm being to you, but what we tend to be for a whole lot of people. I speak good friends on your life. Because there are two types of friends. You need you, you need you some entertaining friends. You need a friend you can call and say, let's go grab something to eat and just laugh. They've been crazy. Let's just go to Applebee's and sit there and just have us a good time because it's been crazy. I got stress on me. I just need to take my mind off some stuff. But the problem is don't ever confuse your entertaining friends with your empowering friends. No, no. I call you when I want to go eat. I call them when I need to get something broke up off me. But I'm speaking God finna bless you in such a way he gonna send you at least one entertaining empowering friend who could be in the car like, where we going? Hold on. Let that almost see. Now let's go eat twin. Let's go eat twin. Am I preaching to anybody? Strong families. Strong, fi strong families. Strong friendships. I'm gonna preach to this side. They sleep over here. Can y'all handle this? Strong finances. They call it, see they sleep. I'm gonna lead them. I'm not playing with them today, forget them. All right, so I speak strong family, strong faith, and strong finances. We so scared to talk about this in church, so I'm gonna say it. I speak God gonna give you some money so you can take care of your family, your children, your business, your ideas, your creativity. Put scripture on it. You are the head and not the tail. The lender, not the borrower. Above and not. Can you put this in your notes for me? That he's not just going to give you money, but he's going to give you wisdom. Get ready. Over the next 90 days after Easter, you're going to start getting text messages from your church saying, hey, financial literacy pop up at the church. And we're going to be downstairs walking through stuff. I'm going to have you with Tiffany showing how to flip properties. I'm going to call her Amber and say, can you sit us down and teach us how to balance this? I'm going to call her Jasmine and say, show us how to budget monthly, please. I'm going to sit you, quiet, PMJ, hear me, you can't give what you ain't got. And this week-to-week -week bondage that most of us live under, that ain't God. I speak God's giving you a type of financial freedom. Y'all don't even know when to receive that. Y all, y all, thank you. They, they don't even know. I, said, I didn't say God's making you rich. I said God's going to give you financial freedom. See, because if God give you a million dollars and you got two millions worth of bills, you're still broke. But if God give you 300 and you ain't got no bills, you got freedom. I might get in trouble for this, but it's cool. I speak God give you enough financial freedom that you ain't got a faith to be around nobody you want to be around. I want you at work like, you know I don't need this right. I've been bested. I've been smart. I got six months worth of living put up where I can have decisions. Baby, I'm free. If my child don't get a scholarship, wherever they want to go, they can go. Because mama, daddy is a tither. He's an investor. He's a good steward. You might as well just shout freedom on my life. Jesus, hear me when I say this. But it takes faith. Can you put this in your notes, put this in your phone, put this in the comments, put this in the chat. Strong faith believes big. We're not going to stop right there, though. 
but it is willing to start small. See, that's what we don't want to talk about. Strong faith believes big, but it starts small. Y'all don't hear me in here. Everybody won't be big. Everybody won't be big. Did David fight Goliath first? No, he had to start small. God said, no, put him out there in the field. See if he can take care of a sheep. Number two, see if he can take care of a sheep against a wolf. See if he can defend a bear. Since he was consistent over small. Y'all don't like me today. Now I can trust him with big. See, that's what some of y'all problem is. The problem ain't you ain't thinking big enough. The problem is you're too afraid to start small enough. If you have faith, the size. If I was to hold a mustard seed in my hand, mama, from where you sitting, you wouldn't be able to see it. But if I put a boulder on this stage, they'll be able to see it from the balcony. And the problem is everybody's running to the boulder. But don't realize in order to hold the boulder, you had to manage the mustard seed. Y'all don't like me today. And we serve a God who can do exceeding and abundant above all we ask, think, dream, or imagine. Yet it is also just as common for some who are willing to think big, but they are not willing to start small. Mm, mm, put scripture on it. Here it is. If you be faithful. I'm going to preach to y'all now. They like excitement. They didn't want to hear that. Mama, they didn't want to hear that, all right? If you be faithful over a few things, Michael, I will make you ruler. Okay, put this in your phone, put this in your notes if you don't mind. Context. <laughs> context is vital. A text without context becomes a pretext, thus conning you out of the truth. Meaning, don't ever listen to something and come to a conclusion sometimes without what? Context. That's, that, that, that is so critical. If I look at you right now, if I look at you right now and shout, I can't stand you. And then you go home and say, guess what? Pastor Mike said, I can't stand you. You're going to go home thinking we were mad. But if you get the context that says, I can't stand you. You got my stomach hurt. You so fun. Do you see how the context changed? So when we read this scripture, most of us takes the text isolated from the context. He says, if you be faithful over a few things, I'll make you what? Ruler over many, many. Put this in your notes. This scripture, this pregnant Matthean text is both eschatological and practical. I don't know how to spell eschatological. You got to spell it the best way you can. Spell it out. Let, let's sound it out. S, 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 that's, I know it's E, S, C, C, C. Hey, Siri. Hey, Siri. Es, eschatological. eschatological. It, it, is, it comes from the word eschatology. Eschatology is the study of the end times. So this scripture is eschatological, end times, but it is also practical right now. He's telling him, watch this, he gives three men some talents. You know this parable in the Bible. He gave one man one, another man another, another man another. One man buried his. You remember that story? Another one got a little bit, but the brother who went crazy, he went dumb with it. He looks at him and says, oh my God, well done, that good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Mm, that's the practical application. Now I can make you ruler over many. Make that make sense. He tells him you were so good at managing small. Oh, no, that's not what he said. Preach, Mike. You so good at flipping what I give you that you now qualify for me to give you some more. And the reason some of y'all can't figure out why your neighbor more blessed than you is because some of y'all are just receivers. Some of us are flippers. <laughs> y'all miss what I just said right there. Preach PMJ, because whatever you put in my hands, I, I'm going to leave that alone. I'll flip that. But it's eschatology. He says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. What does that mean, Pastor Mike? That when you stand before God, he's going to see if you manage your small life. Because he wants to know, yes, you want big, but are you willing to start small? That's crazy, ain't it? That's crazy, ain't it? That's crazy, ain't it? I got pastors who travel here from out of town, and they bring their leaders with them, and we train them all weekend, and they come to church with us on Sunday and see all the stuff we plan in motion. Then on Monday, we debrief, and then I meet with their team again and just speak life into them. And one of them stopped me and said, I can't wait till I get something like this. I said, yeah, that's cool. 
I said, do you know my, my, when I was first having church, it was at the Fairfield Civic Center? He's like, yeah. I said, I was in a room that probably could seat 40 people. He's like, yeah. I said, it was next to the kitchen. I said, so imagine preaching and your whole sanctuary sound smelled like catfish. <laughs> in order for them to get from the kitchen to the ballroom, they would have to roll the fish through my service. I would be up preaching, slap your neighbor a high five and tell him it's on the way. He was like, it's on the way. <laughs> then he would come back through and every time they opened that door, that swing, you would hear it. So I started putting it in my message. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but every time they walk by with fish and yams and collard greens, we going to shout, that means God getting ready to make all of us eat. And that my church, it ain't but 20 of us, they would walk through with collard greens and then we would jump up. <sighs> Lights got cut off, didn't have much, but God was in heaven like, oh, so they can handle that, huh? Then we went from that room to another room. He said, oh, okay, they can handle that. Because you won't be it, but you got to start what? Okay, you don't get me? That's for five of my entrepreneurs who depressed and frustrated right now because you're like, I need a building. You don't need no building. I dare you to stack your clothes in the corner at your house, go to the thrift store and get you one dresser and get a black marker and write business. And when your cousin comes, what's that over there? Oh, that's my store over there. That ain't no store. It may not be a store to you. But if I be faithful over this corner, he gonna make me whoop. Am I preaching it? If I came outside with you right now, is your car clean? But you want a Bentley. If you can be faithful, uh-oh, it's certain scriptures you don't play with. King James, my mama read this scripture, so that means I had to read the scripture exactly like my grandmama said. Got good and faithful servant. This morning, I made a mistake and pressed the wrong button in my, serve, in my computer, and it gave me the NLT version. So, grandmama, I love you, but I got to read NLT. It says, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful, Michael, in handling this Small amount, Michael. So now I will give you. Y'all don't know when to have church. Many more, Michael, responsibilities. Y'all missed it. But here go the, the message finna mess you up. His master commended him. Good work. You did your job well. From now on. You gonna be my partner. Y'all missed that. See, because stewardship will get you a promotion. Y'all miss what I just said right there. So what happens, Pastor Mike? I got to get you out of here. Y'all tired of me. Strong faith. Can you put this in your phone? Can you put this in your notes? Somebody put it in the comments. Strong faith is the ability to take what others overlook and make it overflow. I feel God on that. Y'all got to pray for me. I'm trying to be dignified today, but I feel a run in my spirit. Strong faith is when you have the ability to take what others overlook and make it overflow. Please write this in your phone, in your notes. Faith is not maintaining. It's multiplying. Ooh, I feel God in this. Oh, my God. Faith is not just about maintaining. It's about multiplying. And let's talk about that. So maintaining asks a question and multiplying asks a question. Let's do some deep. Let's do some research. Maintaining asks, what can I do with my blessing? Multiplying mindset says, what can my blessing do for me? Did you see the difference? See, a maintaining mindset says, I got some money. Let me go get me something. A multiplying mindset says, where can I invest this? So it will work for me. Yeah. See, a maintaining mindset will say, I got a promotion. I'm going to take that extra money and I'm going to run with it. A multiplying mindset says, no, I'm going to give me a universal life policy. Put that 75 in it over the next 20 years. And in 20 years, it's going to become so-and-so. That way, I got cash value. When my baby get ready to go to college, I can hand them some money. It's going to crew in. See, it's multiple. Pastor Mike, nobody told me. I'm telling you now. It's because we can't play ignorant forever. I'm preaching if you'll receive it today. And what I'm telling you, 10 of y'all going to receive this and your life going to go to another level. God did not put you on this earth to get by. 
Neither do I agree with what grandmama taught us that you just gotta maintain so when you die, you can get your pie in the sky. No, I want something sound on the ground while I'm still around. That way, even when I get my crown, I'll be able to say my life was one that multiplied. I'm gonna speak this over your life. You ain't gotta receive it. You gonna multiply something. That your children's children's children will be blessed because of the decisions. Y'all don't like me today. Put scripture on it, Pastor Mike. Go to Genesis 128. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful. Be fruitful. And what? The first command that God gives man is a demand to multiply. When he tells them to be fruitful and multiply, he is not suggesting it. He's demanding it. You're reading that scripture. I don't see a question mark. It says God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, over every living thing that moves on the earth. That don't make sense to you because it's too deep. Look at the message version. God blessed them, Michael, and said, prosper, reproduce, fill the earth. This is my word right here. Take charge. Your neighbor don't want to shout. It's two types of people sitting on your row. One of y'all want to jump up and shout, but you don't want the person next to you thinking you think you all that. So you dummying yourself down. If they want to follow, just let them follow. Seven of us know God put me and my family to take charge. God put me in the earth to take charge. I don't have time to play nice. You ought to bump somebody and tell them we didn't come to take sides. We came to take over. Multiply. We produce. Take charge. Now your family had all this time to make sure your family's well-being would be taken care of. How long you gonna play the back seat and not say, hey y'all, we know Christmas coming up. Instead of us fighting every year, let's start putting something together right now, planning it so it don't hurt. Take charge. You got six and seven nieces and nephews right now that you know if you don't step in, stuff not going to go the right way. So right now, start planning. Okay, let me figure out how we're going to do this. I, I met with some people. Here's how we're going to send them to school. We're going to do X, Y, Z, X, Y. Take charge. Yep. I start putting money back and saving and saving and saving, and I'm working on my kids' college. My goal is for my boys' college to be almost taken care of before they even get to the 12th grade. But simultaneously, while I'm working on them, I'm working on your child. Now I'm a pastor, pastor. I'm a pastor, pastor. So now I partner with the Birmingham Promise Program. So every year, watch this, for the rest of my life, I'm sending five kids to college on our church. So as of yesterday, we pay for the whole freshman semester for five students. Let me free you. All you got to do is graduate from a Birmingham city school and stay with in-state. And if you do it, all I got to do is just shoot a text and say, this was one of mine and it's paid. God ain't giving you resources so you can stunt and show you got on Gucci, Dolce, and Cabana. God said, I'm blessing folk who will say, if you do it for me, I'm going to give you 30 seconds. This next praise ain't for a house, a car, a man, or a ring. God put me in position so everybody connected to me. My mama, my auntie, my nieces, nephews, children, my family will be That's what taking over looks like. And that's what walking in purpose looks like. And that's why the devil want to keep you offended. That's why the devil want to keep you wounded. That's why the devil wants you to stay broke. Why do you think people who live wicked seem like they got more than enough? And the folk who live good don't ever have nothing. Because the devil know if I bless them, they going to stunt. But if I bless you, you going to help people now. I'm finna mess you up. My daughter, my daughter McKinley is a cheerleader, okay? She's a cheerleader and she says to me, Dad, can you take me to practice? I said, okay. She said, I got stunt practice, okay? I said, what's a stunt, okay? I think a stunt is a flip, right? It is a flip. It's a, yeah, it's when they hold you up. Right, so I get, to, I get there and they got my daughter in the air. Imagine I come out the restroom and she in the air. As soon as I hit the door, she's spinning in the air. I said, oh, and they catch her. I said, babe, what they doing? She said, she's stunting. 
she, I'm finna run. She's stunned. You thought God called you to stunt. You just picked the wrong definition. Stun ain't what I got on. See, stun ain't showing you. You know I pulled up in that S550, right? <laughs> Girl, you know this new, these red bottoms, you know it. No, no, that's not the stun God called you to. God called you to be a base. Y'all miss what I just said. God like, send me somebody who will stunt. That you'll be like, how much money you got? Come here. What you need? I dare you to bump your neighbor and shout, I'm going to help you stunt this year. I'm going to help you get another degree. I'm going to help your business go to another level. I dare you to slap five people high five and shout, oh magnify the Lord with me. I got to run on that one. Hear me, hear me. Multiply. And the question going to be, which one of y'all going to have enough faith to say, I got you? Who going to have enough faith to say, nah, I like Jesus. Because when we see Jesus in our text today, everybody hungry. Everybody trying to figure out what's next. And the text says, late in the afternoon, the 12 came to him and said, sit in the crowd away and make them go to another village or something because we are in a remote place here. We ain't got enough to feed them. Look at verse 13. And in verse 13, he replied, you. I'm finna run. I'm trying to be dignified. I tried to have church with them, but they're not having church over there. So I'm going to lean more to this side. He looks at them. Look at his click being scary. Look at his click being scary. They come to Jesus and say, hey, Jesus, if you, if you don't mind, let's go ahead and send these people away. They're going to get hungry in a minute, and you know we ain't got no food. Jesus looks back at them and said, you. Give them something to eat. While you sitting here complaining, how you walking with me and still don't act like me? When they ask you, why you cut me off this year? I ain't do nothing to you. Exactly. You didn't do nothing to me. But you also don't do nothing for me. Y'all ain't got to say amen to me. If you're going to be around me this year, you got to walk like me. You got to talk like me. You got to fight like me. You got to pray like me. You got to have a heart like me. Jesus, Jesus, hey, Jesus, hey, it's getting late. These people have been following us, and you know these folks going to get hungry. We need to go ahead and send them to the village so they can get them something to eat. Then we'll figure out what we're going to do. And Jesus looked at them with the Stevie J face. Has somebody ever said something to you that offended you so much that you should? Y'all crying because we ain't got no bread when you've been spending the last two years with the bread of life. Your actions don't look like you've been eating right. He says, you get them something to eat. They answered, we only, Michael, have, Michael, five loaves of bread, mm, two fish. I, I, I'm finna run. I, I'm trying to be dignified and I'm trying to keep myself together, but I don't think y'all catch what he says right there. We, we only have, Jesus tell them, I tell you what, go through the crowd and see how much food we got. They walking through the crowd, right? Walking through the crowd. You got something to eat? No. You got something to eat? No. Hey, you got something to eat? No. You got something, hey, hey what y'all got over there? Nothing. What y'all got over there? Then in my head, they see a little boy with a sack. And they say, hey, what you got? He said, I got my lunch that my mama made. That, I don't know why we don't preach about this mama. We so ready to shout in church, we miss the real lessons. I don't know why we don't preach about this mama. It's Jesus, 12 disciples, 5,000 men, not including women and children, which means it's probably 20,000 people walking and only one person 
had enough sense to prepare. And I don't even know if she there. Because the text don't say the mama got the lunch. The text says the little boy got the lunch. So my question is, did mama open it, put it in front of the boy, and the disciple saw it? Or did mama give it to the boy before he left the house? Because she had enough discernment to prepare in one season for what was getting ready to happen in a... Look at what he says. Look at what he says. He says, you feed them. That's critical. You feed them. Here's what's crazy. The disciples are hungry. Y'all don't like me. He asked, Michael, hungry people to feed other hungry people. Because sometimes God won't wait till you get yourself together to start using you. I only want you to stand on your feet if you've ever been on the phone counseling somebody about something you ain't even figured out yourself. I only want you on your feet if you don't ever help somebody pay a bill not even knowing if your bill won't even pay yourself. I only want you on your feet if you don't ever hung up the phone and was like, I should have told myself that three years ago. Because sometimes God uses you because he wants to see if you are disciplined enough to make it happen for them before you make it happen for you. I just messed six of y'all up. 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 Cause you've been saying out your mouth, once I get myself together, I'ma take care of so-and-so, so-and-so. Sometimes you gotta do it while you getting yourself there. I don't know who I'm preaching to. I came to speak by faith. Pastor Mike, I'm trying to be patient, but God said, I ain't waiting till you get it together. Here it is. I'm getting ready to stretch you. I need you to just reach over and touch your neighbor and tell them scoot over a little bit. Reach over and touch the other neighbor and tell them to scoot over a little bit. Tell them this is how much I can handle. But do me a favor, grab their hand and just pull them a little further. And shout, now look what you can do if God stretch you. I speak by faith, your money stretching. Your life is stretching. Your bills are going down, but your income's going up. You ought to slap 10 people high five and shout, he's stretching me. Yeah. He's stretching me. He's stretching me. And every stretching ain't attached to a blessing. Some stretchings are tied to testing. So the next time somebody comes for you, you might have to say, I'm holding my peace because he's stretching my patience. I'm holding my peace because he's stretching my faith. He says, you give him something to eat. And they look at him and they say, we ain't got nothing. We have, this can mess the whole church. We have only. <laughs> y'all don't even know when to shout. That's why I be laughing at y'all because y'all be complaining with a blessing in your complaint. No, no. I don't know how I'm going to do it this month. I ain't got nothing. They say, we have only, yep, we have only, and I told y'all my problem with our generation is that we recite scripture, we don't read scripture. So you're just reciting what you heard your mama say. Just like I told you last week, what you say, you say God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, it's not love, what is it? Power, love, you have to keep that in order. Because it gives you supernatural power to break it. Perfect love cast it out. And then a sound mind believes what just took place. If you do it out of order, you won't have lasting hope. And because we recited this scripture, you've been living wrong. Because you said he had two fish, five loaves. That ain't what the Bible say. The Bible don't say he had two fish, five loaves. The Bible says he had five loaves and two fish. Pastor Mike, it's the same thing. No, it ain't. Have you ever brought groceries in and you had to get some canned drinks, but then you also had to get some other stuff? 
I believe he listed the five loaves first because the text says, he said, what do you have? Five loaves, two fish. I want to pause and parenthetically digress because here's what I'm going to argue and most scholars argue right here. Did he have five pieces of bread or did he have five loaves of bread? What's the loaf in this text? Okay, because I know a piece of bread is a slice. And loaf is what? How many loaves? How many slices is in a loaf? Now, some people will argue contextually they may not have did slices then. They just had bread and they just had it. But here it is. He said, I got five loaves, two fish. And he said, he took it. Why did he take it in that order? I'll help you. Because if he would have took the two fish first and tried to stack bread on top of fish, he probably would have dropped it because it was out of balance. But if he put the five loaves in place, you can just place the two fish on top of it. And many of you keep fumbling your bag and your blessing because you're picking up stuff out of Don't start another business till you get yourself together. How you going to balance a business book when you can't balance your budget? And God says, put this in your phone, no order, no increase. Y'all don't like me today. No order. Pastor Mike, I don't like when you preach like this. You'll appreciate it later. You'll appreciate it later. Detroit, that's why I love you so much because I remember when you was in empty comedy clubs. I remember when you was on social media in your apartment. So now when I see you with Desi Bank and you open up all over the world, they don't realize if you're faithful over few or if you do it in the right. Mm. And he takes the fit five loaves. Two fish, put the scripture on the screen, watch this. And now Jesus has the dilemma. Michael, y'all, that sounds good. Jesus has a dilemma, hear me? Because he's all God, yet all man. But he realizes if I don't do stuff in the right order, when I leave, they gonna think they can do what I do. So Jesus enters, here's a $2 word, into a paradoxical praxis practiced by the Prince of Peace. It is called a paradoxical praxis practiced by the Prince of Peace. It's when he is teaching classes while blessing the masses. So Jesus says, I'm going to bless y'all, but I need to teach them. Hold on. It's two crowds. You got a crowd over here who hungry. You got a crowd over here who want to do what I do. You got church and you got leadership. And he tells the church, I'm going to feed y'all in a minute. He looks at the leadership and says, pay attention. He took the five loaves and the two fish. I'm finna mess you up. And he looked to heaven. He takes it, Michael, and he looks up to heaven. Because who you look to determines who you will live for. He says, nah, I'm going to pray. He looks up to heaven, Michael, and he blessed it. I'm, y'all got to pray for me. I don't know what he prayed. So I got to imagine what he prayed. And by head, he said, Father God, in Jesus' name. Father God, in my name. I just want to thank you for these five loaves and these two fish. God, I know right now people are hungry. And I know common sense teaches me that this ain't enough for everybody else. But God, I need to show my disciples I'm not like everybody else that even if you don't give me enough for everybody I'm crazy enough to thank you for what I got so right now God thank you what are my shot for the five loaves thank you for the two fish and God if you don't mind I thank you for the mama who had enough sense to put this lunch in that little boy's bag can I pause and parenthetically digress why do you think the person with food was a kid. Because had it been somebody grown, they probably wouldn't have had faith. Which is why throughout the Bible, he tells us to have child. That baby had so much faith that he says, honey, you can have it. He didn't realize he was giving it away. 
but he knew it was better in his hands. Watch this. We're going home. He blessed it. Then he broke it. I said he blessed it. Then he broke it. <laughs> I said he blessed it. Then he broke it. I said he blessed it. Then he blows it. What you got? Two fish. Five loaves. If you give it to me, I'll flip it. Two fish. Five loaves. If you give it to me, I'll What you gotta say? What say? If you give it to me, I'll flip it. So watch what he does. He breaks it. Hey, Dad, you got to pray for me. It's your fault I'm like this. It, 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 you always had me thinking. How long, Javon? I want you to catch this real soft. If I gave bread to the weakest person in this room, you could break it. It don't take much to break bread. Dad, I've never heard a pastor talk about this. I'm not sure how hard it is to break fish. So, Dad, you smarter than me. Like, it's flesh, right? So do they snap it like a cracker? But it got a bone in it. Breads don't have bone. It got scales. He don't scale it. He don't de-skin it. I don't know what de-skinning is. Y'all pray for me. I'm from Ansley. I don't fish. Y'all pray for me. He don't fillet it. He takes raw fish, breaks it. Bread is easy. I believe he's trying to tell you that if you submit yourself to me, I can break the stuff off of you that people thought were unbreakable. Every generational curse, every sickness that's been put on you, every ounce of low self-esteem, the guilt, the shame, I'm not just the God that breaks bread. I'm the God that breaks fish. Anything with a bone has structure. I break systems. I break structures. I break curses. I break establishments. But I don't break them just because you want them broke. I break them because I'm getting ready to pass them out so everybody can benefit from them. So before he gives it out, he gives it to God. Pastor Mike, why would Jesus pray to God, bless it, and then pass it out? Because he was trying to make us understand we have to have a God-first mindset. Hey, if you don't hear nothing else I said today, I need you to remember that. Remember that. A God-first mindset. Hear me. Even when you leave here today, I would, don't do nothing else in life without having a God-first mindset. God-first mindset. God-first Pastor Mike, I'm going to take a job in another city. Hey, have you prayed about that? God first. I'm about to do something. God first. I just got paid. Tithe. God first. God just gave me a promotion. Don't post it. Don't call nobody. When you get in the car, Father God, I thank you for this. God first. Watch this. We're going home. Got ready to go home. Here it is. Watch this. He breaks it. He blesses it. And he gave it to the disciples. Again and again. Listen to your pastor. Listen to your pastor. This is crazy, Gabby. I want you to listen to your pastor. Who ate the fish? The people. Who did he actually give the fish to? Not one time does Jesus put a piece of bread or fish in a person's hand. Because that's a principle. He's not going to bless you all the time directly. Sometimes he blesses you through a person. I'm giving you good measure. Press down. Shaking together, running over shell. Somebody's going to do it for you. It's also a test to the disciples. Because I know you hungry. But leaders don't eat till everybody has eaten. 
I be messing my church up, right? I be messing my church up. We be doing functions, and I'm the pastor, so they fix all this pretty stuff. I'm like, Pastor, you go ahead and eat, and all my food be cold. They still don't get it. I am not eating till I done walked around that room and made sure, hey, hey y'all, hey, you got enough? Hey, you got enough? Hey, you got enough? And that's what's wrong with our culture. That's what's wrong with the African-American community at times. That's what's wrong with so much stuff. We so busy trying to eat. Who gonna make sure everybody else get fed? All my teenagers, listen to me. That's why I need you in school getting your work. You don't like what's happening in your family? Make a decision today. In seven years, everybody gonna eat. Can you stand to your feet with me? Watch this. He blesses it. He breaks it. He gives it to the disciples again and again. Pastor D, hey church, y'all don't be seeing what I be seeing? I think I'm starting to think I might be a little crazy. Like, I be seeing stuff that don't nobody, okay, okay, I'm going to do it again. Okay, okay, all right, D, 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 okay, okay. You ready? All right, give me the five loaves. Give me two fish. Give me two fish. God, I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Go pass it out. Booyah, now come back. Pass this out. Come back. Because the scriptures say, again, when I get to heaven, y'all got to pray for me. When I get to heaven, I'm going to be the person in heaven who, like a little child, they'll be like, hey, hey, find somewhere for him to go. Like, he, he getting on my nerves. I'm going to be, I'm going to find the room, Jesus and, and Peter, James, and John, and me. I'm like, hey, hey, Jesus, you got a second? What, Mike? Okay, I got a question. What, what, okay, c c I'm confused because when you was at the wedding, you kept feeding people, giving people the best wine, but it was in a container. So I don't know if it was transforming in the container or in the pouring. Like, so was it, was it bad wine in the container? And then when they poured it, it shifted. I don't know. But this two fish and five loaves messed me up. Because this math ain't mathing. Because if you take two fish, five loaves and break it, and you hand it to the disciples, did the bread and the fish come out your hands, like, where does it come from? Like, what? so, so did he have a, a, a lunch box? And every time he went into the lunch box, it was a new pair of fish and a new pair of bread. Or, since you are the bread of life, was it just appearing? I think Jesus is gonna look at me and say, Mike, you remember what your grandmama told you when you were six? I'm like, my grandmama told me a lot. No, grandma, remember what she said about blessings? I'm like, oh my God. He said, now tell it back to me. Anyway, you bless me, Lord. I'll be satisfied. And the last scripture says, we're going home on this. It says, they all ate. They just didn't eat, church. satisfied let's go home on this and the disciples picked up me and you be having church I, I, I don't know about everybody else and the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls y'all be missing it y'all missing it they picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces See, you thought it was a whole fish and a whole loaf. Bruh, they went around and was going on the table like, there go a leftover piece of bread. Here goes some fish they ain't finished. And it was enough to fill. How many basketfuls? How many? How many disciples is it? Which means I don't have to be jealous of you. Because I got a basket, you got a basket, and you got a basket. We may not have the same stuff in a basket, 
the longest profile basket's full, you ought to shout, he's blessing everything connected to me. Can you take your neighbor by the hand? Father, in Jesus' name, they're holding the hand of a multiplier. God, for some of us, we've never had enough resources. We've never had everything we needed at the same time. God, it's funny, but we had peanut butter, no jelly. Ketchup, no mustard. Had the money, but didn't have the opportunity. Got the opportunity, then didn't have the money. But God, this year, I speak the next 36 to 48 months will be a strategically aligned season of our lives where our favor is about to match our opportunities. Our favor is about to, our finances are about to catch up with our favor because we're multiplying some stuff. God, I thank you right now that we will adopt a God first mindset. We will adopt a God-first mindset. God, we'll be a generation of tithers, a generation that prays first, a generation that seeks God first. God, especially for my 20s and teens in this room, God. God, don't let them have to fall all the way down just to find you. God, everybody don't need a testimony that they fell down and fell off, but then God said, devil, you are a liar. I speak that off my boys, off my daughter, off their sons, off their daughters. I speak by faith that, God, I've heard about generational curses. I speak generational blessings. I speak we will leave a name so well that our sons and daughters will get jobs and opportunities the moment they hear the name. God, is, is your mama so and so? Oh, my God. I speak that type of generational favor over our lives. God, I call forth every anointed person who's sitting on the sidelines. They dealt with hurt. They dealt with abuse. They dealt with rejection. They may feel overlooked or overvalued. God, part of favor is, part of faith is being able to take what other people overlook and make it overflow. So God, I speak right now that they will come out of hiding. They will get, put their faith back to the test. There's a generation, there's a, a remnant of people who need more than a Pastor Mike more than a rock city church god their testimony alone was set free heal and deliver so many people and i called them forth now god i pray for all my creatives in this room god all my entrepreneurs i speak their businesses will be blessed i speak wealth over them not just riches i speak wealth over them information resources influence connections i speak that they will get in the right rooms get the right mentors, get connected to the right places. God, I pray right now for my creatives after they, after they stand on stages of thousands and make it to big screens and do incredible things in their music and in their arts, that God, you will get the glory out of it. Now, devil, I know you eavesdropping and you ain't gonna stop and we ain't either. We ain't never ran from you and we ain't finna start now. So right now, I plead the blood of Jesus from the top of their head down to the soles of their feet. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So I come against every principality that's trying to hold up every area that's holding our people of faith back. Devil, you are a liar. We've come to be what you called us to be. Put us in your word, God, to reproduce, prosper, and take charge. And this is our season to walk in strong faith. It is in the matchless name of Jesus we pray. And everybody say it. Amen. Give God your best praise right there. Amen. Good job. Were you blessed today? Come on, don't lie to me. Were you blessed today? Do me a favor right now. If you want to give your life to Christ, and if you can stand still for a quick second while we do this, if you want to give your life to Jesus, it'll mean a lot to me. Falling in love with Jesus is still the best thing I've ever done. You got me? And bruh, so many times when you get saved, people put a pressure on you to be perfect. I'm not asking you to be perfect. I'm just asking you to be available. You know, this is your walk with God. That's why I'm pushing us to have city groups. That's why 
They're coming out to get the field ready for the spring so we can be training and playing flag football and kickball. That's why I'm working with the city of Birmingham and the city of Hoover to get certain facilities open for us to do X, Y, Z. I don't just want you to come to church and be saved. I'm trying to put community around you so you can be. He didn't walk down right. Y'all better clap for this brother right here, man. Y'all better clap for this brother right here, man. Pastor D. And we normally don't do this, but if you're in this room right now, and some in your spirit saying today is your day. I dare you to bust a faith move right now. Normally we don't do that, but I dare you to bust a faith move. That's another man right here. Come on. Where my Rockefeller's at? I need y'all moving. Come on. Come on. I need y'all moving. Come on. Come on, prayer team. Come on, leaders. Y'all come on. Come on. Wow! Y'all see these men coming? Look at these. God, hey, baby girl. For my prayer team, y'all just come if y'all don't mind. Look at God. 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 Wow. Look at God. Come on, come on, look at God. Ooh, you did almost so quick by Shatan. Yes, God. Yes, God. Lift it right now, God. See, you don't know who got so much on them. They just feel like the everything is collapsing. Yes, God. Come on, yeah. Come on, God, baby girl, down here, if you can just pray right here, come on, right here, yeah. Come on, just jump in and help us, come on. Right here, yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. 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 God, I thank you. God, I thank you. Terrell and Stephen, if y'all don't mind, I need y'all help praying over here. Come on, I need y'all moving. Come on, I need y'all moving. Come on. I need y'all moving, praying right there for that brother right there. It's all right. This is what church is, ain't it? Come on, I need y'all praying right there. I don't know where Terrell is. Y'all tell him get in church. Y'all come on. Where at TT? Get him. Thank you so much. That's him. Yeah, I see you. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. There they go. Yep. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Give me C sharp. Yes, God. Yes, God. Can you stretch your hands this way? I got another one. What's up, man? Love you, man. God, I pray for this man. I pray for every woman, every man in this room, online and in overflow. God, we pray for strength right now. God, there's a weight that so many people have been carrying. And it gets heavier when you're carrying it in silence. So right now, God, we ask that you cover, keep, bless, and protect them. I speak wisdom. I speak peace, Bravis. I, I speak peace over their life. I, I speak, God, that you're doing what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Woo! Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. It's all right. Come on. It's all right, come on. It's all right. It's all right.
People still coming, Jesus. Yes. Be bright. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You don't mind, can you just slip a hand in the air right there? Come on, come on. Somebody say hallelujah. There's so much that God desires to do in and through us. And the question isn't, can you handle your blessing season? It's, can you handle your breaking season? And, and some of us look at our breaking season the wrong way. Watch this. The two fish and five loaves were whole but limited. When they were broken, they were expanded. And God does not break you for the sake of breaking you. He takes you through a breaking because he's getting ready to multiply. And I speak that over your life. That there are some things that God is breaking off of us. Right now. I don't know why I keep hearing like the last name Wilson. There's things... 
that God's breaking off of us, huh? Who? That's your name? Like there are things that there's so much, there's so much that you finna have to make up in your mind, baby girl. And say, you know, I'm not, I'm done going above and beyond for people that you know taking advantage of you. And you know don't mean you well. For the sake of friendships, the devil is a liar, girl. God's shifting something. He's breaking something in your life. And I don't even see, I almost see like journaling happen where your thoughts and your creativity, that God's going to download so much wisdom in you and so much knowledge in you. The devil is a liar. Y'all ought to, don't even know when to shout. That that's what he's doing. And what God desires to do in and through us, as cool as I try to be, you better believe I love God. And I want to see him move. I love technology and I thank God for screens, but I want power. I want people to walk, come in in wheelchairs and walk out walking. I want our church to be a place of miracles, signs and wonders. And all of that is available when we as a collective body put God first. And that's what I speak. I cancel, I, I cancel in the spirit negativity and assignments that have been attached to your life, demons and demonic seances and words that's been spoken over you. I counsel every, I pull down every stronghold. I counsel and break every soul tie. You finna walk in freedom this year. You ought to shout, I receive that. So I mean that if you're in this room and you're giving your life to Jesus, even if you're online and you're giving your life to Jesus, you can just repeat after me, say, Lord, come into my heart, make me over again. I confess with my mouth, I believe with my heart that you raised from the dead. And right now, by faith, I am saved. Now praise him like you believe that, man. Jesus. I don't know about you, but just touch two people and tell them something's getting ready to shake in your life for the good. Something's getting ready to shake in your life for the good. That's the wrong neighbor. Touch three people. Tell them something's shaking in your life for the good. Look at somebody behind you and shout, go ahead and prepare your mind right now. Look at them and say, can I prophesy to you? Say, can I prophesy to you? Say, neighbor, I believe. That it's my seed. We get ready to go home, but can we celebrate God? And I believe you ought to shake somebody real good. That it's my time. It's my time. And I can feel it. it. Breakthroughs in the room. Say, Breakthroughs. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I can feel it. I can feel it. Joy's in the room. Joy's in the room. I need the whole church. We're ready to go home. And I can feel it. I can feel it. Say, Pam, in the room. I'm anticipating. God's getting ready to move. Speak to yourself right here. For I know that God is work a miracle just for me. And it's gonna be my future is my season is it's gonna be there and it's gonna be what is God doing for you and your family? God is not you. You did the impossible. Impossible. You did the
can't take this. Y'all got to pray for me. But when I see people get excited about God again, bro, I can't take it. I can't take it. And there's an awakening happening, especially in my men in this church. It's a real life awakening happening. So we finna go to another level in God and you better put your seatbelt on. I feel God doing something. Listen, before you leave today, I just want to tell you I love you. I need you to do me a favor. When you leave, I know you want to get past traffic and you don't want to wait. Real soft, man, if you can do your pastor a favor, I had to stand before the zoning commission of Shelby County and Hoover. I had to stand there for an hour and listen to them tell me they're excited that we're in the community, but it's scaring a lot of people. In a sense, it's a good scare. This place was vacant for years. So now you got to think about it. Thousands of people out of nowhere just zooming down their streets. Or maybe when you come out the parking lot to avoid 119, I mean, Valleydale, you bust a left real quick and kind of go through the neighborhood. Do me a favor. Don't do that if you don't mind. I really, this is why I'm here during the week, and it's a lot of kids that be on that street. And the last thing I want to happen is you rushing to beat traffic, and God forbid you hit somebody on a bike or or I want to show you how to be a good steward. I want to be a good neighbor to this neighborhood as well. I want them to speak well of us. Yes, it's a great thing that a lot of people are coming to church, but I also want to model to you how to walk in humility and be a good steward, not just over what he places in your hand, but who's watching what's in your hand. So for me, I stood before him and they shared with me some of the things they didn't like and uh, the DJ's too loud. So I went out there today, bring that down just a little bit. Why? We want to be a good steward. Yes, I want to create an atmosphere and experience, but not at the expense of ruining somebody's day. Uh, and that's just not Christ-like. So that's what we've been doing. And I gave them my word. I said, I'm going to stand before my church with integrity. And I'm going to ask everybody, if you don't mind, please don't zone through these neighborhoods. Drive respectfully. Drive carefully. Uh, just think about what you would do if somebody zoomed down your street while your man man was just out there playing in the front yard. You'd be frustrated, right? So let's just be respectful if you don't mind. I love you so much. I want to tell y'all thank you. And this is why I want to tell you thank you. I woke up this morning thinking I was going to be at church by myself. It's daylight savings time. I was like, they're going to wake up late and be like, ah, I just watch online. You up in here, ain't you? Look at you. Clap your hands. Even though you thought you was coming to the first service, you're still here, ain't you? Look at you. No, but I love you, so I want to give you one announcement. Easter weekend is so important. I didn't want to scare this neighborhood, so one thing I'm doing is we're going to have our early morning 9 o'clock service, then we're taking everybody to the Boutwell at 1130. You're really going to love it. They gave me the entire building. Shout out to our mayor, Mayor Wolfen and all that. They done gave me the whole building, right? So upstairs at the Boutwell, when you get there, it won't even look like upstairs. I done went to Home Depot. I done bought all the indoor, outdoor grass. So the moment your child get upstairs, they, I'm turning, I'm going to do an indoor Easter egg hunt. They're going to have rides upstairs, their own praise and worship. It's going to be crazy while you're downstairs, and we're going to have a good time in God. Uh, so I just want you to be prepared for that. Be prepared for that. And I just believe God's doing something special. Also, if you signed up to lead a group, who signed up to be a group host? Anybody? Look at you. Clap your hands, man. This Tuesday is our first training, and I'm asking you to be here. I'll be here. I'll be sitting right here. I'm going to walk you through it. I believe real life change happens in community, and my goal is not to have a church full of people who look at me, but a church full of people who work with me and help in changing lives, and that would be so, so, so important. So I love you. Were you blessed today? Again, my parents snuck in church. Can y'all make some noise for my mom and dad right there? Hey, mama. Hey, daddy. They look good too, don't it? They look good. I love them so, so much. And I'm going to say this too. We got to make sure we shout out our own. I love every time I see Desi Banks. I love all the skits he do and everything he do. But our very own Detroit Reed, man, been blowing the world up. Can we make him feel at home? I'm proud of you, bro. Keep doing your thing. I'm going to just go ahead and speak. When you do your Netflix special, you better say we are Rock City at the end of that thing. God bless y'all. We are. <laughs> I need that, Doc. So I love y'all. Were y'all blessed today? Yeah. Were y'all blessed? Did y'all see my movie on BT? Did y'all yeah. see my movie? Did you see me? Man, God works in mysterious ways, man. I ain't even have to act. I was just acting like myself, wasn't it? So no, man, they think they offer me another role. I think they want me to be a gangster in the next movie. I was like, nah, God bless you. I ain't got a thug and bone in my body. 
I'll be in there trying to break yourself. Like, I, I, I don't know how to do it. But I love you so much. I'm going to pray this prayer over you. Lord, your will. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say it. We are. I'll see y'all next Sunday. Let's go. Good job.